I will go ahead and get started. And today we are going to talk, discuss how to engage students through powerful questioning. So if you can see the slide on the screen, you're all set. Uh, all attendees are muted upon entry, but feel, feel free to use the chat feature for questions and comments. And, and please feel free also to change your name to include your school or district as well. Uh, just a few notes before we uh, get started or before we even get into those notes, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, I'm happy to be here today uh, moderating this session or, or uh, leading this session, facilitating this session. Uh, we do have a, a lovely mod moderator here as well. Uh, but my name is Caitlin McLemore. I am an instructor with EdTech Teacher. We are a partner uh, with the Vils Digital Promise program. And I am joining you from Tampa, Florida. As I said, I have experience as an educational technology coach at K-12 schools here in the Tampa Bay area and also in the Nashville area as well. So I've worked a lot with students and teachers to integrate technology into the curriculum to transform teaching and learning. And I'm very excited to share with you some uh, tools for facilitating powerful questioning with your students uh, in, in your classroom. And I've got uh, Sherry here who can introduce herself. She'll be moderating today. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, welcome everyone. Hello, my name is Sherry Lofton. I'm the instructional technology trainer here with the VILS program. I'm in the central region. I am in St. Louis, Missouri, um, but I spent half my life and worked um, for half of my time in Chicago, Illinois. So we are so happy you're here and just keep uh, writing in the chat. We'll be there um, to support you and connect with you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Sherry. Okay, so next we'll talk about a few norms for our session today. Uh, we invite you to do everything you can to engage in this workshop. So feel free to use the chat to ask questions, to discuss, to participate. Um, if you have anything that you're interested in adding or sharing, um, I, I always welcome participant uh, feedback and participant uh, discussion and, and examples. It's always great to hear what everyone's doing in their own classrooms. Uh, and, you know, most of the time we don't realize that by engaging and participating, that helps us to activate our brain and learn and retain information, just as we ask our students to do as well. Um, another reason we ask you per, to participate uh, is to help provide some context. So some local context, uh, you know, there's people from all over the country here. So it's important to think about how the things that we are discussing today uh, tie into your own varied experiences and providing diverse examples really helps your peers out, other people that are here as well. Uh, so as we go through this session, I want you to think about these questions. How do I see myself using this content with my students or how do I see myself using this strategy with my students and how can I use this skill and, and for what purpose? So what value does this add to my classroom and to, to engaging with my students? Uh, so, you know, along those lines, be mindful, be present and be kind to yourself and others. I know this is a, a very busy time. And, and so we do all appreciate that you're taking the time to learn new strategies for engaging your students. So our session objectives for today are to, uh, to have learners explore the use of questioning strategies with students and to examine how students can drive questions to recall, reflect, and synthesize learning. So this strategy of powerful questioning really occurs when students learn to ask thoughtful questions throughout the learning process and the learning experience. And one way to facilitate powerful questioning is by using an inquiry-based learning process and by encouraging self-reflection for students, not just at the end of a learning unit or lesson, but throughout the learning process itself. So, now we're going to watch a brief video uh, that shows uh, from, from Digital Promise that shows what the research says about powerful questioning and how that can really help students learn and how it can and make the learning experience more meaningful. 
what the neuroscience research has kind of unequivocally shown now is that it's sort of neurologically incompatible to be both engaged in deep meaning making and connecting the things that you're doing and learning to the broader narrative of kind of the story of who you are and what you understand and how the world works at the same time as you're paying attention into the world and gathering information and trying to complete tasks that require sort of planful executive function. In education, we often overprivilege the mind state that's not involving this sort of default rest network, but instead is involving this kind of all eyes on me, watch and pay attention sort of mode, which is an essential mode for optimal learning. But if we overprivilege it, what the evidence suggests, and this is not proving it, but we have accumulating data to suggest, and it's very consistent with what we know about how the brain works, we may be developing young brains that are biased toward this kind of right now goal-directed thinking at the expense of helping kids build the kind of internal compass for self and complex meaning making and critical thinking that's going to allow them to use the skills that they're learning outside of the immediate context in which they're learning them in order to be a productive, creative, innovative person going forward. This has a couple of really important implications for how classrooms are designed, how digital media environments support learning. We want to mindfully build into the learning space opportunities for what we call constructive internal reflection. Several studies now have shown that opportunities for reflection, for example, in writing, can be excellent for helping people to make deeper meaning and thinking about the broader context of what they're learning. But What's really important to think about is the writing skill of your learners in that context. So if your students are at a point where engaging with the writing process in a concrete way is using up their cognitive energy, then that's not a reflective experience. They may want to do their reflections by uh, reflecting with a friend or a classmate or by um, doing a video recording of themselves describing what they mean. It really matters that we don't just narrowly define good education as the building block skills, because those skills will by definition neurologically not transfer out of the context in which they were learned without a child's supported ability to integrate those skills into the broader context of what they want to do in their life, who they are, and what uh, problems really drive them in the community. And thank you, Sherry, for sharing the link to uh, the further research about uh, powerful questioning and inquiry-based learning and how that can really help students develop not only as learners, but just as individuals. And, and the idea of powerful questioning really can translate beyond just a specific uh, subject-specific curriculum, but can really tr uh, transfer, as, as she mentioned in the video, uh, transfer across subject areas and, and be applied in a variety of different contexts. So we'll just take a moment if anybody in the room has a, uh, a thought about the research or about what they learned in that video, first impressions, thoughts, you're welcome to turn on your microphone and, and share your thoughts or initial impressions or just share in the chat as well. I know it was really interesting when they talked about the um, the type of reflection. If that if the type of reflection was taking up too much cognitive space, then you know it's not being as effective as it could be if it uh, if there was another a way to have that um, type of reflection, talking with a friend or something like that. Like so, hearing the science of the brain is I just love to geek out on this type of stuff. <laughs> Yes, I agree. Uh, and, and really thinking about that, right, that cognitive overload and, and not, you know, implementing strategies at the expense of the students being able to be receptive and self-reflective. And so I, I see in the chat, Carmen also, right, mentioned that it's really important to think about the types of reflections and the types of questions and when to use them, right? We're, we're not always going to have students be self-reflective or we're not always going to have students reflect with their peers or, or uh, or, you know, the questioning experience is going to vary based on individual learners, based on the subject or based on the, the specific topic. So choice, yes, Julia, choice is really uh, a critical component uh, and providing students choice 
in when and how they ask powerful questions or how they reflect on their learning process. I'm not going to show you the video again. <laughs> I'm going to try to move on to the next uh, the, the next slide, which this is referenced uh, from the Challenge Institute, which has a challenge-based learning framework. And I've got the link here in the presentation and the presentation will be shared out later on. Uh, but the idea, the challenge learning phrase work, uh, framework, excuse me, really illustrates some places in the curriculum or in the learning experience that you can help facilitate powerful questioning. So we start, by engaging students with a topic that might be presenting a big idea. So maybe you'll learn you're learning your students are in uh, science class and they're learning about fossils and fossil identification, or maybe your students are in sixth grade and they're doing a class novel. So you're presenting the big idea or the topic to get them curious, to get them engaged. And then that's an appropriate time to ask essential questions. So what do we need to know about this topic or what kinds of questions do we need to ask to really understand the big idea or you know just letting students think and wonder uh, that's a really great way to have students engage with a topic and engage with the topic in a way that's meaningful for them and then they can develop begin to develop some actionable challenges that allow them to inv investigate a topic uh, going on to the next phase where they're engaging with the content and they're investigating the content in a way that's meaningful to them so they're making meaning and it's personalized so at that stage they're asking guiding questions they're engaging in guiding activities and they're analyzing different solutions to their challenge based uh, their their challenge based topic and then they act on that topic so they develop some solutions they share with an authentic audience and they they evaluate solutions. So at that point, the questions would be what worked, what didn't work? You know, what did we learn about this topic? What did we learn about this process? Uh, so if you're interested in, in looking at that framework further, Sherry has linked to that in the chat as well. Uh, but but what we think about this idea of inquiry-based learning or powerful questioning, what is the, the point here? So the point really is to help students attend to their learning, to strengthen their memory, and to build skills for the future. So if we talked about, uh, if you think back to the video, um, she really talked about these skills that are applicable beyond just the classroom walls and, and that are translatable into a variety of different situations. And inquiry and powerful question questioning really can facilitate that deeper learning and demonstrate understanding of a topic. So not just that accumulate accumulation of knowledge where they're retaining the information and then they're they're uh, sharing it back out to you but really deeply thinking about and engaging with the topic and engaging with uh, that topic in a way uh, that can really be empowering for students to develop understanding of the world around them so during powerful questioning experiences or inquiry based learning, what is the teacher doing? The teacher is really collaborating and partnering with learners or with students through the inquiry process. So, uh, you know, thinking about the guide on the side and so sort of the sage on the stage, um, I know that's that's something that uh, a lot of people are, are maybe familiar with, uh, but really thinking about we empowering the students uh, and, and as educators, as teachers, being a learning partner uh, and teachers can also model positive habits uh, and think about modeling some of those powerful questioning experiences and model some of those new uh, inquiry based learning and thinking strategies and then you know along with that modeling teachers can uh, seek new knowledge themselves so you know teachers are engaging in inquiry based uh, process themselves as well and then also providing some guiding questions and questioning protocols so there might be times where you have open-ended questions but there's also you know this is a new skill for students the idea of questioning and powerful questioning and inquiry and self-reflection so they will need some guidance it's not just letting them go and letting them just uh you know, run with their questions, it's helping them through that questioning process and through that inquiry based process and providing some guidelines and some support in that. And then the student is asking questions to guide their learning. So there might be open ended times, there might be some more, uh, more concrete 
steps uh, where they're they're asking specific questions. And the student is also recalling their prior learning, making connections to new learning, and then reflecting on their learning and the learning process, as I said before, uh, throughout the learning experience. And then documenting the learning experience is a really important piece here because that allows students to have sort of the data and the learning artifacts to really then uh, do some deeper questioning during self-evaluation and self-reflection. What did they learn? How did they engage with a topic? Uh, what do they know, think, and under, uh, know, feel, and understand about a topic? And what, what questions still remain? So I thought this was a really important quote to include as far as inquiry-based learning and powerful questioning. Students continue to learn, but now share in the responsibility of defining the journey by asking those big questions, uh, aligning to standards, acquiring resources and teaching. So, so, you know, students become partners in the learning experience. What are some technology tools that facilitate powerful questioning? Uh, in, and this is a great time to share in the chat too, if you have some examples. Uh, but if we think back to that challenge-based learning framework, uh, you can engage students with new topics and ask essential questions using maybe some interactive presentation tools like Nearpod or Pear Deck or live polling uh, like Mentimeter or Poll Everywhere. And then you can investigate a topic using collaborative documents, either you know, Google Docs or Microsoft uh, Word uh, or you know, whatever platform that your school is using. Uh, there's, there, there's lots of options as far as collaborative documents or collaborative presentations. And then students can act on a topic and share their solutions using presentation software or maybe evaluating their solutions or doing some of that self-reflection and that self-evaluation using a form creation tool like Google or Microsoft Forms or you know, some other tool that you have as well. So in thinking about that challenge-based learning framework, I want you to think, uh, these are some questions, some guiding questions for you as we continue through our session. So what are some of the big ideas or essential questions within your curriculum? And what are some alternative approaches and future learning experiences that can maximize opportunities for inquisitive and reflective learning? Uh, so I'm going to put a one minute timer on for everybody to just think on and reflect on these questions. And then I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts. That was such nice music. <laughs> uh, but I would love to hear uh, your answers to these questions. Chat or mic. <laughs> um, I was thinking in terms of, I work in a library, so I work with teachers and children having to learn the research process and what's important about it. and why plagiarism is important or how or knowing what plagiarism is is important and when i was thinking about it um i was thinking about how sometimes students need to see what happens if you plagiarize and why you would need to know correct information and looking for correct sources and all of that um and i guess maybe presenting a situation where they would have to be the person that is being plagiarized in order to understand it. 
it's certainly important for students to have a, a personal connection to what they're they're learning about. I, I agree. And and uh, you know, some of the questions that might come along with that is, you know, how did that make you feel, right? And and emotion can really be a a, a way for students to make meaning, uh, and and certainly in thinking about the plagiarism issue, which I know is, is a, a big concern in research. Absolutely. I'm just thinking of um, how, you know, a lot of the times when students are creating um, presentations, they'll um, take they'll take images off of the internet and they'll just say, I got it from Google, you know, but it, it's from a website. And um, it's interesting because uh, my husband used to work at Save-A-Lot and there was an issue with, um, <laughs> There were some images that were being used that were they did not have permission to use. And there's a company that goes around and buys just random images so that they can go sue the people <laughs> and get money for it. So in the real world, there's a lot of ramifications of stealing other people's work, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. And that brings in that real world connection, right? And thinking about why is what I'm learning about important for, for later on? Any other thoughts? You know, then what Carmen says, it makes me think about, there's a recent thing, we're thinking about something that's connecting to the students. More recently, I know um, Cardi B, she had an issue because she used the, um, the image that she used on her album car cover was someone's tattoo. And that person who had the tattoo sued Cardi B, saying that, you know, her her success is based on using this image that she got from my tattoo. So, you know, there's just different ways that um, that we can kind of see that and maybe sometimes make it related to popular culture that connects to the students, too. Absolutely. Well, oh, I see in the chat someone sharing essential questions. How do we develop our own identity and how do we respect others' personal identities and some alternative approaches? Let students brainstorm and discuss how their identity is shaped. Uh, certainly, certainly it's, it's, that's a really great powerful opportunity for self-reflection and then also for empathy as well and, and thinking about those questions that develop those skills and those are really important skills uh, beyond just a, a singular curriculum those are there's a really great life skills that are applicable to a variety of different contexts oh okay so now that you have begun to brainstorm some of the essential ideas within your curriculum. Uh, we are, and, and going a little bit, as, as Rita said in the, the chat, going a little bit beyond the surface level of the curriculum and thinking about the deeper understanding and deeper engagement with your curriculum. Uh, we are going to spend the next portion of our session with an application of learning, okay? so. Over the last 20 minutes or so, uh, I've presented to you about inquiry-based learning and powerful questioning and how that can really engage students throughout the learning process and thinking about what students and teachers do during that process. So now this will be your opportunity to apply what you learned about inquiry-based learning and powerful questioning to a lesson uh, that you are uh, either that you have done in the past and you want to modify or something you're thinking about doing in the future. So this document uh, that is linked on the slide here and uh, we'll, we will share in the chat, this document helps you to redesign an existing lesson or create a new one that focuses on inquiry-based learning and powerful questioning. So the document loosely follows the steps of backward design, which we don't have time to go into today, but the idea is beginning with the end in mind. So what is essential about your curriculum? What is essential about this learning experience? And then how can you, how can you help students engage with that uh, through inquiry-based learning and powerful questioning? So Sherry shared in the chat the inquisitive and reflective planning document. 
And I will also open it in the on, on my screen as well so you can see it. So as it is here, you depending on the device you have and what browser you're using, you may be able to edit it kind of here within the browser. Otherwise, you may have to download the PDF, uh, but it is an editable PDF. So whether you're able to edit directly in your browser or have to download it first, the idea is that you are spending time uh, filling out this document and engaging with your content and designing a learning experience uh, that is inquisitive and reflective for students. So you start. it starts by asking, what are the learning outcomes you would like to see? And then what evidence during and after learning will demonstrate that this learning is happening? And how will students have opportunity to ask questions that guide learning? And then maybe what resources will support students? So if we think about, uh, I, I think I, I mentioned an example earlier, uh, you know, your fifth grade science teacher and you're having students explore fossils and, and look at fossil classification. So the learning outcome would be, I want students to understand how to classify natural objects. Uh, and then what's evidence that demonstrates that this learning is happening? Are students design, you know, are they, uh, are they classifying their, uh, a specific set of fossils? Are they, uh, you know, creating a presentation, explaining fossil, what they learned about fossils? You know, are they creating a video? Are they working with artificial intelligence where they're, uh, you know, designing, a, a classification program? What, what are the different things that can show that they really understand this topic? Then how will students have opportunity to ask questions? So are they asking questions when you introduce the topic? Are they asking questions when you uh, engage? Uh, you know, what, what point are they recalling their prior learning? What point are they making connections? What are the kinds of questions that they're asking and when? And then if we think back to that video, uh, or our discussion earlier, uh, how, you know, what are the different types of questioning opportunities? And then what resources would they need? Are they going to question with their peers? Are you going to have to guide them through a questioning process? What's going to support students uh, during the learning experience? And then there is uh, some during lesson look floors and reflection, though that's something that's going to happen kind of after you implement the lesson. So what we're focusing on today is just the first page. And um, so now that I've kind of reviewed this document, uh, I, I'd like for you all to spend a few minutes uh, thinking about an existing lesson or a new idea for a lesson plan. Uh, and, you know, would love to hear your ideas in the chat. Some of you mentioned during the questioning, you know, plagiarism or identity and empathy, uh, but would love to hear your other ideas as well. Is everyone already busy working? <laughs> uh, okay, so now that I've reviewed this planning doc, the goal for the next 20 minutes or so is for you all to find an existing lesson or think of a new idea for a lesson plan and to fill out this document. Uh, so it's really meant to help you plan and help you think about how inquiry, reflection, and powerful questioning can engage students in your classroom. Uh, and so, you know, I've got a 30 minute timer here, but let's say we'll go till the 50 minute mark. Uh, and I would love to, yes, uh, have, you know, as we're all here working, uh, would love to hear your thoughts in the chat or, you know, you can turn on your microphone. Uh, but this time is really meant for you to plan and think about questioning and inquiry and inquiry-based learning opportunities in your classroom. Are there any questions for me? Caitlin, um, can you talk a little bit about um, how to um, reconsider um, applying this strategy with a technology lens? Sure, sure, yes. So if, we, if we think about 
uh, you know, maybe the traditional writing a persuasive essay. So, you know, the traditional assignment might be a student's writing a five paragraph essay and there are specific things that they have to include. Uh, but, you know, there's ways that technology can facilitate a more inquiry based process and, a, and, a, and, and turn that into maybe a more engaging and in, uh, reflective assignment. So the learning outcome with that might be students learn how to you know, present an argument and use details to support their point. Uh, but then you know, what evidence can demonstrate that the learning is happening? So maybe students are writing a persuasive essay in a uh, collaborative document like a Google Doc or a Word Doc. And then they're doing some sort of peer feedback as far as asking each other questions to engage with their topic a little bit more deeply. Uh, and then, you know, the teacher can also provide some feedback and there can be a little bit more of a conversation there as far as commenting and suggesting and, and asking those deeper questions. Uh, or, you know, in the example here, it says, you know, students read an essay versus students express. So maybe they don't even have to write, but maybe they're creating a video uh, where they're presenting an argument and then they're using details to support their argument. So success doesn't have to be just writing five paragraphs with a paper and pencil. It could be through that collaborative Word document. It could be through an engaging video. You know, maybe students are designing a website uh, where, you know, if they're using Google Sites, that's a, a, you know, they're presenting their argument or maybe they're doing a slideshow or a presentation uh, where they present their argument and then they have details to support. So it doesn't necessarily have to be you know, what is, what is it that you want them to learn? Uh, you know, there's a variety of different technology tools that can demonstrate something like presenting an argument and supporting details. I love that you were thinking flexibly um, using the technology as far as argument, argumentative writing, because, you know, creating content, developing websites, developing, you know, videos, podcasts, things like that. And then even with the questioning piece, engaging um, the viewers as people come across your content and they're commenting in the chat, you know, how do you engage that way? And even having students be able to engage with each other on content that they create. So that's a really cool thing that you brought up there, Caitlin. Yeah, and Caitlin, I just wanna add that I, I think your example is really powerful. And I think we're um, all as educators in a unique position right now in that um, for the last year and a half, we've, you know, had to use technology um, uh, to conduct all of our instruction. And so this right now provides us a really powerful moment of reflection of like what worked and what didn't with the tools that we were able to use in our classrooms. And then really thinking about how we can leverage the things that really worked um, to really amplify a strategy like questioning. So I, I think your example was amazing. So thank you for that. Sure, sure, yes. Uh, so are we going to, um, to uh, have folks just go ahead and begin to this work on their own and then we'll just have them share out? Yes, yes. So hopefully you all are able to download the document and edit it and then we'll come back together and would love to hear your thoughts and, and how the process was and, and kind of what you've been working on. All right, awesome. Now we'll keep so I don't know, I can set a timer. Let's see about, we're ending questioning with you. Ah, I'll repeat that. Then. <laughs> now that you've had some time to think about your uh, own curriculum and how you might facilitate inquiry-based learning and powerful questioning, in your curriculum and, and how technology can help facilitate that questioning process and help document the learning experience. I'd love to hear from you all about your thoughts. So did you find a lesson plan that you would like to redesign or did you find areas of your curriculum that you can incorporate questioning? Uh, or, you know, I used to think X, but now I think Y. So I used to think that there was no room for questioning in my curriculum, but now I think that I can engage students with questioning when I introduce a new topic. So we'd love to hear your thoughts either in the chat or on mic.
I would like to share that for me, I was thinking about when I have students write, um, usually when they are drafting and they turn in several, several drafts, they don't really respond to the feedback that I have given them. Um, and so I was thinking of a way where they can reflect and keep all of their drafts in one maybe file where they can go back and see the actionable feedback that was given to them and then question how they can refine it based on what feedback I've given to them. So that was something that I was considering. Great, yes, and some digital, you know, word processing tools, you can think about version history, or you might have suggestions and comment features where you're suggesting edits or you're asking comments or providing your feedback directly on the document. Uh, yes, the Google Docs comment section is a great place for that. And version history is a great place for that too. I mean, even if you did want them to have totally separate versions, maybe you're doing a folder where they're putting in each version of their work. Uh, but I would, I would encourage you to look into commenting in version history if you're a school that uses Google Docs or you know if you use Microsoft, there's some uh, options there as well for commenting and for looking at editing and suggesting. The other thing you might consider too is, is there a way to ask questions in your feedback that, you know, some things it might be, you need to delete this or you need to add this, but are there questions that you can ask during your feedback that kind of models that, that questioning process or that reflection process? So, so instead of saying you need to add more detail here, maybe you're asking them, how could you provide the reader with more detail or how could you provide the reader with more a rich description? I'm not sure what, what subject area you're teaching, but, but maybe modeling that questioning process in your feedback. And then certainly if this is something that students struggle with, you know, maybe you start out by modeling uh, those self-reflective questions, or, or maybe you have a list of questions. So when they're going through your revisions or they're going through your drafts, maybe they're, uh, you know, there's a list of 10 or 12 questions that they can ask themselves about their work and about their, your feedback that, that helps them along. What I also found that, that um, kind of worked and I kind of liked it when I worked with a learning support group is having the students ask another student to look at their work and to question. And so they could provide feedback to each other back and forth, not just teacher feedback. Absolutely, peer feedback can be a really powerful opportunity for students to, uh, to learn and, and to question. And, and that helps them practice the it, it's it's a really it, <laughs> peer feedback can be really powerful because they're providing feedback to someone else and that also helps them to reflect on uh, their own learning processes and their work and and so that's a really great opportunity right and it provides a different voice um, so so maybe if you're doing a, a writing you know you're writing an essay maybe some of the draft students are providing peer, peer feedback and then some of the drafts you're providing feedback. So you can do that variety of feedback and that variety of questioning uh, to, to give students diverse opportunities to, to really think about and reflect on their work. Also the peer pressure of having other people besides the teacher look at their work ups the ante. And a lot of times that, you know, they're more, they're more, um, they, they have more motivation to make sure that their work uh, is something that folks can understand. It's like, oh, I don't know what I wrote. Like, oh, I don't, oh, let me do that again. You know, so when they get that, when they have those other eyes of folks who are in their peer group, um, I know that's very powerful too. Yes. I see the question about discussions and questioning in a math classroom. So math, uh, you know, maybe, Maybe you're doing something where it's a problem-based opportunity where students are having to, or, or some sort of design thinking where you present students a problem where they're required to kind of use math or apply their math skills to, to answer or to address that problem. Uh, and so maybe incorporating some of those additional elements of design thinking and problem-based learning where they're having to, to really engage with the problem or, or, or ask questions about a problem that will then 
guide them toward uh, applying those math skills. It's a little, that's a, math is a little bit trickier. <laughs> uh, but maybe you also have a math problem and students are, uh, you know, you're asking students to ask questions about, you know, what do I notice about this problem? Or what do I notice about the way the problem was solved? Or are there different ways to solve this problem? So, so just adding in that curiosity and adding in that, that inquiry uh, could be an option. Uh, and then self-reflection too. So if you have students that are solving math problems and then, you know, thinking about, is there a different way to solve it? Uh, it and just doing that self-reflection piece once they've completed assignments. Uh, simulations, oh, that's a great one, yes. Uh, thank you. Virtual simulations can help students, to, can help spark inquiry and help spark questioning. Uh, Desmos, you beat me to it, I was gonna say. Desmos has some really great simulations that might spark some uh, creative questioning in a math classroom. But I do see, please feel free to continue sharing in the chat. Uh, but I do see that we only have a couple minutes left. So I do want to uh, encourage you all to fill out the survey for this session. And Sherry has posted that survey link in the chat. Uh, if you did request a certificate of completion, you'll receive that in email uh, uh, or via email. Uh, but otherwise, thank you all for attending today and for engaging with the content. And thank you to those of you who participated in the chat and on mic. It's always great to hear from participants what they're doing in their classrooms. Uh, and so Sherry has posted the attendance survey and then also a link to the deck as well. So the deck has lots of different uh, resources. So any of the research that I talked about or any of the frameworks are included within that slide, uh, links are included within that slide deck. And then we also have our Summer of Powerful Learning series continues. So I've got the schedule up here as well. And uh, the schedule with more details about each of the sessions is included in that link at the bottom of the slide. And also uh, Sherry posted the Summer of Powerful Learning link in the chat as well. So, uh, Feel free to join us for any of those sessions. All of these sessions will be, the recordings will be posted. Uh, Sherry, do you have information about how and when they can access the recording? Yes, so we will be sending an email uh, to all of you um, who registered with us. And then we will also um, be making sure that we have, um, we have the a recording to where there, there are captions and everything like that, so it's um, accessible for folks, but you all will be getting um, communication from us with that, so thank you. Okay, great. And now it's two o'clock or the end of the hour, whatever time zone you're in. Uh, so thank you all for attending and have a great summer. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you next week.